Hello, welcome back. So I am back home in Sydney. I finished my five months on exchange and to finish off my like exchange experience vlogs and stuff, I thought I would do a review of my exchange at the University of Manchester. Um, and I thought I would break it down into a couple of categories, but also just have a bit of a ramble basically. So the categories are homesickness, university slash academia, the city of Manchester, and making friends and I'll put the timestamps for each of those categories down below but yeah let's get into it so firstly homesickness this is gonna be the shortest section ever because I'm just gonna say that I didn't really get homesick I mean at first I was really sad to leave home for sure like I was sad not to see my friends and family again and also just I had FOMO basically I had FOMO for missing out on like all the experiences that my friends were gonna have whilst I was away, all the time they would be spending together without me. Um, but in the end, like, life just keeps going on. And I know that sounds really lame, but I think like going on exchange was a really good first step in being away from home for the first time because it had structure. I was living in a hall and I had all these people surrounding me and I had, like freshers week where I could make lots of friends and all of that so I never really felt that homesick to be honest that could also just be me so I can't speak to everyone's experience but yeah I did not get that homesick okay so number two university slash academia okay so for this point I'm gonna make a lot of comparisons to my home uni in Australia because that's kind of the only like other benchmark that I have for comparison um, so first I'm going to talk about academia. So before going on exchange, I was quite scared that I was going to find it really difficult in the UK. Um, specifically at Manchester, which I know is quite a well-ranked uni. So I was quite scared that I was going to struggle um, with the uni work. But if I'm going to be honest, I didn't find it that difficult. But then again, I was taking a lot of easier non-mathematical subjects. Um, I study economics and development studies, by the way. And so maybe that's why I found it less difficult. But if you didn't know, the UK and Australia grades marks differently. So a pass in the UK is 40%, whereas a pass in Australia is 50%. The highest band in the UK is a first, which is 70 plus percent, whereas a high distinction, the highest band in Australia, is an 85 plus. So in my opinion, I think it was easier to get a first in the UK versus getting a high distinction in Australia. And I would also say, this is something really strange about the University of Manchester. And I don't know if this applies to all subjects, but if I'm gonna be honest, like our final exams, they basically told us like the questions for the exams before the exams. And so you could pretty much, if you put enough time and effort, you could pretty much go into the exam literally knowing the answers because they told you what was gonna be in the exam anyways. Like, I don't think that's really the case at my uni in Australia at all. Okay, so I was just editing this video. I know it might look like nothing's changed. I can't tell if I set up the camera exactly in the same spot but I realized I forgot to actually talk about what I thought of the teaching. And basically my general thing is that sometimes you have good teachers and bad teachers and that's pretty much the same across all unis. But yes, I actually went into the University of Manchester thinking it was gonna be a lot better in terms of like social sciences because it's like got a really good reputation. Even my lecturer from my home uni had said that it was really good for development studies and so when I took up a sociology subject at UOM I was like I'm prepared for like my life to change, for all my perspectives to change and to be really challenged but if I'm gonna be honest it wasn't the best and that's not true for all sociology courses because I have spoken to some um, other people studying social anthropology and they've said that's not the case but for this subject it wasn't great and the lecturer was really lovely don't get me wrong but unfortunately i didn't feel like i learned that much and i feel like 
the only learning I had was from the readings, which I didn't also enjoy that much. So that was a bit disappointing, but I also had one really good economics lecturer who like I didn't always understand what was in the lectures. So quite a few times I went to his office hours and like he would sit down and pretty much go through the entire lecture with me. Um, and it was amazing basically. So yeah, I think you should keep it in perspective. Um, just because you have a bad class doesn't mean it's going to be a terrible university. Um, that's just all unis really. Cut back to the rest of the video. <laughs> university life in general in the UK I would say is better purely because there's a culture in the UK of moving to go to your university um, and living in like a university hall whereas in Sydney in Australia everyone pretty much lives at home and then just travels to uni daily um, and then it kind of feels more like you go to uni, you study, and then you come back home, um, and then that's it really. Whereas in the UK, I feel like, yeah, everyone moves to go to the uni, and like it's a big like step forward in your life of moving away from home. And also, cities are built kind of around unis, or at least the universities are quite a big part of the city. Other than like London, which obviously is like a big city anyways, but I feel like the universities in Manchester are quite a big part of Manchester the city itself. So I feel like there is a better like community feel um, At universities in the UK. I would also say that I loved living in like a student hall like that was just so Lovely to have people around you basically all the time if you're not feeling great You can knock on people's doors and it's like five seconds away um, if it's like in your hall um, And there's just always people around like I think that's one big thing that contributed to me not feeling as lonely. Even if I just walked into the hallway, I would often bump into someone, have a little chat or something like that. And that was just really nice. Like, it's nice having people always around you, or at least for me. I know that can bother some people, but I found it enjoyable. So I really enjoyed the university experience in Manchester. Okay, so moving on to Manchester, the city itself. Now, this is probably one of my biggest regrets. I did not explore Manchester enough. I think this was because I tried to avoid spending money, to be honest. Um, but I wish I had just like walked all around Manchester and seen all the sights. But what I will say is that Manchester is a really cool place. It has a really cool vibe. And also like the symbol is a working bee. I think people from Manchester are really proud to be from Manchester. And therefore like when you visit there, you're like, Oh, this is like such a united cool place, you know, like that could be a completely incorrect assumption as an outsider But that's just like my interpretations of what Manchester is like and also it's got really like cool new hip places um, and like I know if you're up for a night out, which is not the kind of person I am, but you know, if you are, I've heard accounts that it's a pretty good place for a night out. And also, it's got quite a few bubble tea options, which, um, if you're like me, that's an important part of the place. Also, a great thing about living in Manchester is that it's super close to the Peak District, which I really loved, because Manchester is not the greenest place ever but the peak district was just like a half an hour train ride out and it wouldn't cost that much for a return on the day ticket and if you wanted to go to places like Mantor or Stange Edge it's yeah really not difficult to go out for a weekend hike and the peak district is beautiful maybe not as beautiful as the lake district but it is super beautiful and it's so close and I think that's a real benefit for living in Manchester also on the topic of like access to locations, Manchester is in the middle of the UK which is like amazing basically for travel. Another great thing about Manchester is that it's super accessible by bikes. Everywhere is quite flat so it's really easy. I mean I didn't have a bike but it would appear that it's quite easy to ride your bike around um, which I think is a great way of staying fit and also get into your location. I didn't do it but you know you can. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my summary of Manchester. I think it's a really lovely place to live. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. And then finally on making friends. Okay, so this one is a bit of a interesting topic. Um, 
this might not be what you expect from watching my vlogs, but if I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I made really strong friendships in Manchester. And if you're a friend from Manchester, please don't be offended by this. Um, but I mean, it's hard because I was only there for five months anyways, so it's pretty difficult to establish like a super strong friendship in five months, but I think I was better at making like a lot more friends versus a few friends that were really strong. But at the same time, as I said before, I never felt lonely. And I think it's pretty easy to make friends in the university environment um, with the halls, with all the activities and societies um, that the uni offers. And so, yeah, it's kind of difficult. I don't think I made the strongest friendships and that is disappointing. Um, but at the same time, I was never lonely and I actually really enjoyed my time there. And I really enjoyed just being exposed to so many new people at once. Like I remember those first few weeks especially, I just loved meeting new people. So yeah, that's all I have to say about making friends. I'm just gonna chat a bit about like my other thoughts um, on exchange in general now. From this experience, basically I've just taken away that it's best to like appreciate everything no matter if it like doesn't live up to your expectations or if it's not the most amazing thing ever. I think I've just like learnt to not regret anything, <laughs> regret the whole experience. Like I really don't at all. Like I, it's, it's definitely been the highlight of my entire university life. So if you're thinking about going on exchange, I know that money can be an issue. Um, but if you do have the opportunity to, I would strongly recommend trying it. Oh, and also I wanted to touch on the fact that, um, so some of my goals for exchange were to become more independent and to grow like in a self-development kind of way. I don't even know what that means. Um, have I become more independent? I think so. My mom still says I'm pretty immature, but I think that like, if I had to move out or if I had to live in a completely different place now, I would definitely say yes to that kind of experience now. Like straight up, I'm like, yeah, no, nah, I could move. Um, whereas before I was like, oh, I don't know. Will I be really homesick? Will I be really sad? Um, but no, I've actually learned that I kind of love the experience of being in a new place. Like I really do. Um, and self growth. This one's a tricky one because I don't, no, to be honest, like I've been trying to reflect on it, but I don't really know yet. But I think I'm always going to be trying to be a better person. Um, and so, yeah, the journey doesn't end here. So that's my review of my time in Manchester. This is probably going to be the last video I make related to the University of Manchester at all. So I know a lot of you who are watching uh, watch me for my UOM content, but if you want to stick around, I'll still be here uh, and I'll see you in my next video.